Okay, our session's being recorded. Okay, Yelena. Hello, everybody. My name is Yelena, and I'm, I'm a, a Cognos administrator. That's an application that you're going to use for the remainder of the course. So the purpose of today's meeting is to help you get started, and we have a lot to cover. So I'm just giving you guys heads up. There is a lot of information, and what you will need to do is you will need to watch this presentation more than once. Even if you're able to attend today's meeting, you still need to watch this more than once because it's a lot of information, all right? So here is a long agenda. I'll show you how to get started. I'll, I'll talk to you about the interface, how to access the preloaded data, of course, where you need to save your work. And here it gets hard, the data sources, different data sources you can do. We talk about the data preparation, explorations, and a lot of stuff, a lot of interesting stuff. But first of all, you might be wondering, what is she talking about? What is Cognos Analytics? It's a self-service with intuitive interface, right? So basically what happened was when I uploaded the data, right, into the shared folder, Cognos Analytics analyzed it for me. It looked at the relationships among uh, columns, right? And it was pulling out some useful information that we're gonna see. The whole idea is that you're not gonna be writing uh, pages of Python or R code. You're just gonna do drag and drop and it's gonna give you the results. It's gonna give you the useful insights without actually writing the computer program. Uh, and what, what, what you, you'll be able to do later in the course is interactive dashboards, right? You're not gonna be doing reporting in this class, but in general, just keep in mind, it's possible. Okay, so key things here. You don't want to use your browser back button because you're gonna lose work. Remember that deletions cannot be undone. There is no recycle bin. Uh, now, if you delete the data files that used as a source to build the visualization, and I'm going to repeat it multiple times, then your visualization is going to become invalid. And you cannot, you cannot recover it, right? Uh, you always want to save the work and you want to start working on assignments already because if you get stuck, you know the story. Another thing it's important, uh, we're going to log in to the remote workstation. You cannot copy paste from your computer directly. Well, there is a clipboard tool, clipboard tool to do that, and I'll show you how to do it. So you're gonna be working on a remote workstation, and I'm gonna show you how to access it. So here we go. This is where you're gonna go, and I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna show you now, so watch, pay attention, and then after this, after this presentation, I want everybody to make sure that you're able to access your account if you have not done so yet. So this is a VDI that UMUC.edu. I know university was renamed to UMGC, but the site is still UMUC. Now, this takes you to what? This takes you to the UMUC single sign-on page, right? So what you're gonna enter here, you're gonna put your uh, university credentials, right? Okay. So I'm entering my university credentials here. It's the same way you access uh, Leo, right? Here we go. This is a remote computer. Your view is gonna be a little different than me because I'm administrator of the Cognos, but you're gonna see, everybody's gonna see this little shortcut, IBM Cognos, right? What you're gonna do is you're gonna click on this, well, click on this and then click on open, okay? What that will do, it will launch the Cognos Analytics login page. And according to the slides, see this is the next slide, uh, your Cognos login is gonna be the same as your university login. For the password, it's gonna be this, capital letter W, number three, and then it's L-C-O-M-E, an exclamation point. I took the word welcome, capitalized the first letter, replaced letter E with number three, and put exclamation, right? Because the password must have an uppercase letter, must have a number, and must have a special character. That was probably the best way to do that. All right, so password, everybody is the same, but you're gonna be logging into your username. Your username, for convenience, I made it the same as your Leo username, all right? So uh, for me, for me, I'm gonna use the demo account because I don't want to use my admin account, okay? I don't want to use my admin account for this because there are gonna be more options that you will actually see and I don't want to confuse anybody. So I'm entering the password, right? And now I'm gonna click on sign in. 
uh, when you log in for the first time, it might take a couple seconds more because it's built in your profile, all right? So now this is what not to do. Never, never save the password, okay? Never save the password in the browser. Never do that, just because in case it changes, you may get yourself locked by accident. All right, so what do we see here? This is a welcome screen, and this is exactly how it's gonna look like, right? It's a welcome screen. Uh, what you see here on the left, right? Home, which means this is a home page. Then here is important, my content. When I click on my content, this is my work, right? This is the stuff that I have been working with. Nobody else besides myself can access it. When I click on team contact, content, this is a shared content. It's something that either was pre-installed or something that administrator Elena put here, right? So this was me. What I did for you, this is a folder that I created. The rest of the folders were pre-installed. So this folder is data 610, data for assignments. Important. So what you're gonna do here, you're gonna click and you see the substructure. This is your first homework assignment, getting started, right? This is your first assignment. This is where you'll find the data. You're gonna click here, right? For the first homework assignment, this is what you're gonna do, is this. This is your data. Uh, you will have to make a copy of this file to your content area because you cannot uh, do anything in, your, in the team area. For right now, this is a read only, right? This is what you will do. You'll do this. You're gonna do move and copy. Now what you're gonna do here, you're gonna select your personal area and then you're gonna do this. You're gonna do copy to, copy to. Well, move to supposed to be grayed out. Well, you cannot move to. But if you do that, if you attempt to move it, guess what? You're gonna get an error. If you do this, you're gonna get this error. And the reason is it's because I don't want you to be removing files from the shared area, right? So if you want to do the copy, of course, you're gonna select your own, right? So th there's, if, if you see this little guy, one guy here, it's my content, all right? And you're gonna do this, you're gonna do copy too. Then when you go to my content, you're gonna see this file and you ask to do the explorations and a lot of stuff with it, right? So notice that this is my content. As I start, uh, as, as I keep working here, the files are gonna be, it's gonna be piling up, right? And if, if you're looking for something, you can search it. So here we go, you click on the funnel and you can, uh, for example, you can filter it by, uh, you, can, you want to see only the data, right? Or you want to see the dashboard, et cetera. There are different file types and I'll talk to you about that. Or if you want to see only the explorations, things like that, right? Then here, what you also want to do, if you know the file name, you can type it in here right, like insurance, and it's gonna find it for you, right? This will search your own personal area. And also, sometimes you want to get more, okay, clear all, will clear the filter. Sometimes you want to get more organized. Uh, for instance, you may want to add a subfolder here, right? And you can type something like assignment two, something like that. And you're gonna place all your assignment two files in that folder. So you can get, you can get the little bit organized but you can only create folders in your personal area, right? You cannot create any folders in a team content because this is an area for everybody. Another thing that you were gonna see here is that uh, there is an area called recent. What you will see here is what was recently opened. And just for the purpose of demonstration, I cleaned, I cleaned it up. You can, if you delete something from the recent area, it does not delete the actual file. Recently viewed, it's basically what you recently accessed. It's like a shortcut, so to speak, right? Then here you've got some links, some useful ring, links to the documentation. Uh, please ignore this piece. It's not gonna work. Do not try to upload files. Trust me, it's not gonna work because it, it's off. It's turned off for good reason. All right, so now let's look at what data we're gonna be working with today. Okay, okay, so those, oh yes, very important. Before I start showing you any data, I must show you how to work in the remote workstation. So this is a different computer. If I try to copy and paste something in here, I cannot, I cannot. Watch what you're gonna do. 
is this thing slides out, right? This thing slides out. And here, this is a clipboard, right? So in order to copy paste text from your PC into anything in there, you would have to take, you would have to take this here. Like for example, this is an expression that I wrote and I want to reuse it. So I have to do this control C. So then I go in here, oops, I, I need to open this guy right here, control V, right? Then I go back in here when I want it copied and do control V, okay? You cannot copy it directly. You have to use this little, little clipboard here, okay? Just remember that. Then you cannot save anything to the remote machine, right? And just in case I labeled it, but uh, based on the permissions, you won't be able to upload the files. But in general, when I uploaded the data, I had to upload it to the workstation before I could upload it to the uh, Cognos, all right? So just, just keep in mind, right? It, it's not your computer, it's a remote computer that you're accessing. So this one I went over, this is the, the interface. And uh, another thing is this, this is, uh, you can access it uh, everywhere, regardless where you are. And this is basically your information, that's username, and I'm using Elena demo user here. All right, so let's go back because I need to show you. So here, this is where the data is located, right? There is a subfolder for assignment two. There is a subfolder for assignment three and four. Since assignment four is a continuation of three, you're gonna use the same data set for those two guys. And then assignment five is gonna be the group assignment. And one more thing that I'm doing is this. If you go under team content, right? Uh, over here, this is a folder where I'm gonna put everything that I used in this walkthrough. So if you want to follow along afterwards as we watch the recording, it will be available for you. I'll do that. All right. So now here is the data that we're gonna work at today. Uh, the data, the data source for source source for tonight's demo, right? That is what it is. Uh, notice that this is basically an insurance data, and I see the customer information. I see the country, state, etc., and the claim number. Then I see different information about the claim, and then I see some information about the person's coverage, right? effective date, etc. Then I see the monthly premium. I see how, for how, how many months ago was the last accident, etc. I see the car type, right? However, to make it more interesting, notice that some of the data is missing for numerous reasons. Some, some records are totally incomplete. This is, they're missing more than, uh, they're missing data in more than one field, right? This is. Uh, and sometimes it just uh, one field that is missing. We're gonna learn today how to handle this. We're gonna learn how to handle the missing values. All right, I'll show you how to do it in uh, uh, in, in in Cognos. Okay. So now we need to talk about different options here, the data sources. For your first homework assignment, you're asked to use the data set. What is the data set? Data set is just the data that I uploaded for you. You're taking a copy and you're just gonna do an exploration for the first assignment. For the introduction to Cognos Analytics, for that assignment, you are asked to, to submit a proof that you're able to access, that you know how to copy the data from the shared folder, right? And there are a couple of few minor things, few explorations that you need to do. Applied filters, etc. However, the problem is if you're doing it, if you're doing it the way you're gonna do in this first homework assignment, when you add calculations, well, you're not asked to, but when you do something, it will not be reusable anywhere else, right? It's just the data set. But if you use the data set as a source, anything you make, any, anything you add in your workbook, such as calculations, etc., it won't be available anywhere else, right? So we want the work to be reusable as much as possible, and we want to take advantage of the Cognos uh, data preprocessing capability, right? So what I did here, I spelled out for you the differences. You cannot edit the data set directly, but for the data modular, you can apply customizations just by 
uh, agent filters, and you have a you you are able to preview the data directly, and uh, even it, actually you're able to even combine multiple data sources. We're not going to do it in this class, but just bear in mind it's possible. All right. So here, one thing to pay attention to is that uh, where do you add something and how you add it. It's very important where you add something and how you add it. And I'll show you as we go through the walkthrough. So what you need to do is you're asked, starting from assignment two, you're asked to create the data module. And important, I'm going to repeat this throughout. If you create the data module from data set, you might be wondering if you could delete the data set. No, the answer is no, because there is a dependency. Once you delete the file, everything that was built from it will be deleted. That also applies to users. If I get deleted, right, since I'm an admin, I'm an owner of other users, then we're gonna have problems, right? All right, so you're gonna create the data module, but remember that there is a very, there is a lot of dependencies. So oh, here, there is more than one way to create a data module. I'm gonna do this. I'm going to go to my content and notice that this, so let me do this. Let me filter it out so you see only the data. Oh, but when I filter it by data, you also see the data module. Oh, well, I created this while I was playing around, but let's do this. This is a data set, right? If you see this arrow like this, it means it's a data set. And also it says dot Excel as X. This is a data set. So what, what I want you to do for your second homework assignment, we want you to do this. Oops, let's close this thing here. Sometimes it, it would not close, so you have to kind of like play around a little bit with an interface. Oh, you have to click on the filter, that way it will close. Now, look, this is what I'll do. I click here. This is called the actions menu. It tells me what I can do from the data set. First assignment, you'll be creating the exploration straight from the data. Next assignment, you're gonna do this, create data module, and you're gonna do it for the rest of the course. You're gonna be creating a data module. Now, what's happening here? Uh, this here, this here is a source. It shows me what data I used to, to create this data module. It's linked, basically, this data module is linked to the data set. When I delete the data set, this will become invalid. That's it. I will lose everything, all my work. I will lose this data module and I'll, use, I'll, I'll lose everything else where this is used as a data source. All right? So what you need to do next is this. You need to save it. Always save it. I'm going to go save us and I'm going to do the, I'm going to save it to my content, but remember this. In my content, I cannot have more than one file with the same name. So let me create, let me name it like this, claims and weather module, right? I do this, all right? And I'm gonna hit save. So this creates the data module, right? What, do, what else do I see here? Those are the variables, right, in my data. But wait a minute. Elena just showed us the data structure, but where is the row ID? Huh? I don't see the row ID in here. Where, where does it come from? She says there is no row ID. There is something called hidden column. In this case, row ID is a hidden column. It tracks the row number. Hidden column is what you see here, but you, you, you do not see it in a, when you use this as a data source. You don't see this column. That's what hidden means. When you click here, you preview this data in the grid view. Now, don't worry about the relationships because we are not using uh, we are not using uh, multiple uh, data sources in the same data module. We're just using one. All right. So notice that here, different icon. It means that the, is a different data type, right? Uh, here are also my variable names, right? And the values. Uh, one thing to notice is this, the missing values are represented as null. Null stands for missing. And you see this? 
I have four fields here missing the value, right? So I could call this record as incomplete if I want. Huh? So now we're gonna get to the topic of data preparation, right? Data preparation. And I listed uh, some key points for you. So here in this, I listed the key, key points about the uh, data modular interface. So that way, when, when you are watching this presentation, you can review and you have it in writing. Right? Uh, we're gonna work, we're gonna talk about the data preparation. Data preparation involves adding filters. And it involves, you may hide certain fields from the view. You may change properties. We're gonna talk about handling missing values. Uh, you, in general, you, you may try to identify the outliers or extremely large values. Uh, you may add calculations. You do data groups and navigation paths, right? We're gonna do most of this. All right, so let's do this next. What is filter? You want to, sometimes you want to take the subset of data that meets a certain criteria. That's what you want to work with. And there are two types of filters in Cognos Analytics. The first filter type is called embedded. What embedded means is that it applies immediately, right? Whatever criteria specify, it's gonna be applied immediately, right away, right? Selectable filter, it means that you will have an option. When you create your visualizations, you will be able to drag and drop. So that's filters that you can turn on and off anywhere where you use this data module as a data, as, as, as a data source. And I'll show you how to create it. So here it's gonna be important. What you create and where, it's important, right? Uh, you may define multiple filters in the same data module you might define the filter at the column level and at the table level, right? Because if you want to perhaps eliminate the rows that have uh, more than, that have perhaps two specific variables missing a value, right? And you want it to be applied immediately, of course it has to be the whole, it, it has to be the whole table. So sometimes you want to define the filter on, on the whole table. Sometimes you want to find a filter on a single column. Right? So where you click, where you define it, and how you define it matters, and I'll show you. Right? So the first type of filter, I'm gonna we're gonna start with embedded filter type. And to do this, well, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna filter out the rows where the effective to date is missing. So basically, I want to look at rows where effective date is not missing, right? So effective to date, it means that we have a date until which an individual is covered. I just for my, my business purpose, I assume that if there is no effective to date, the individual is not covered. I want to omit them. So what the filter should say, the criteria is effective to date is not missing, right? There is an operator called is missing and is not missing. We have to specify here, when we get the filter, we specify what criteria the row must meet to stay. And in here, this is gonna be embedded filter because I don't want my users to see it. anybody who does not have effective date, right? So in this case, I want to create an embedded filter. So to do this, watch what I have to do. I have to do this. I have to click on a here and this is gonna be well, there are two ways to do it. I can look at the properties. You want to look at properties and you want to do the filters, right? Here, right now, there is no filter. You have to add a new filter. But again, this is very important, how I add my filter. If I click here in do filter, right? Or if I do manage filters, it matters, okay? If I want the filter to be applied immediately, I have to do it either manage filters Right, this is one way, or I can go to the properties, right? Properties, and then go to filter stuff. Right now, what I have to do is in this case, let's do this. Let's select VR expression editor. I want to edit VR expression editor, right? And I'm gonna do add a filter here, and it's gonna open my expression editor. And I want to say this effective to date. So to do this, 
I can just drag and drop. See, these are my fields here. Effective to date, right? And what did I say about effective to date? I can just type it. I can type is not missing, and it is gonna it, it's gonna find it for me. Is not is not missing. Sometimes it finds it, sometimes it's not. Okay. Okay. Or if I don't see it, I can do this. I, there's another way to do it. I delete this. I go to functions, right? And then I go to operators, and this is the operators here. We want to say is not missing. It's going to be in here, and I just drag and drop this. This is another way. So this is this is the thing. Effective to date is not missing. And in here, I need to create, I need to specify the name, okay? So let's see, let's say this has effective date, right? You want to have a, a name that has a meaning, and I'm gonna explain why later. Has effective to date, right? So, what this will do is it will it will eliminate the rows without effective to date. But since we're in the editor right now, I'll show you something else. See this? This allows you to preview if there are any syntax error. In this case, there are no syntax error. Uh, here you can basically the preview if it's an expression, you can uh, preview what it evaluates to. If effect effective to date is not missing, that it returns one. If effective date if, if effective date is missing, it will return zero, right? Because that's a row that it's gonna eliminate. Let me click on okay, and you're gonna notice the change immediately. Because earlier, when we looked at this data grid, we saw a bunch of rows, right? We, says, we saw the row that had missing values in several fields, including effective too, right? Well, of course, we are not done with missing value yet, but we will handle them later. There are still some missing values in the claim reason, etc. right? But what we did was we eliminated the rows that were missing the values in uh, several variables. So here you have some decisions to make because sometimes you don't want to delete a row if it has just, if it just missing a, a value for one variable, right? Because there is a risk of losing valuable data, right? It all has to do with the requirements. So this filter, this is called embedded filter because there is no choice. It applied immediately and you do not have an option to change it, right? You don't have an option to turn it on and off. Uh, another way you could do it is this. If I click on the vehicle class, if I go right click here, and if I select filter, when I apply the filter here, it's going to create an embedded filter. It's something that I cannot turn off. Uh, it's, it's, it's a filter that applied immediately and I have no control over later on. So if I go back here, and if I go back to here, see this funnel, it means that the filter was applied. I can do this and I can go to my manage filters. And right now I'm gonna delete this. I'm gonna delete the uh, vehicle class, okay? All right, so I want to, I said it was effective today, right? So now let's create a selectable uh, filter. So that's basically a filter that I can decide if I want to use later on in uh, when I create the data exploration. The reason I want to create it here is that because I want it to be reusable. I don't want it to, to keep on redefining it. And sometimes my expression could be very complex. So I don't want to, I want to, I want to reuse the work basically, right? So let's close it out. And I'll show you what we're gonna do. First we save it, right? We save it. And notice this, these two guys here, these two buttons undo, allow you to undo the last action. And I believe it goes down to 20 last actions. Not quite sure, but I've seen it say 20 somewhere. Okay, now what is what I'll do? I'm gonna click in here and I'm gonna select filter, right? I'm gonna select filter, and I want to say this. This is very important, very important. I want to do something very descriptive because when I use this filter from my exploration, I'm not gonna know 
what it, I'm not going to be able to see this definition. I'm not going to be able to see this expression when I use this filter from my exploration. So I have to have a descriptive name. So suppose that I want my filter to take a subset of rows where the coverage type is personal, right? And the vehicle size is small. So I'm going to name it this. I'm going to say, I'm going to name it personal coverage for small for small vehicle. Okay. This is the filter name. Now what I wanted to do is this, I, and I, I'm doing it now uh, in, in intentionally so that I can use I can show you how to do copy and paste again. Before this, before this, I did a little bit of homework. So this is an expression that I want to use. I want to say if policy type contains a string personal, and this is case sensitive, and the vehicle type, a vehicle size contains small. This is a filter definition. I, I created this and I wanted to copy and paste. Watch what I need to do. I have to do this. I have to do the control C, but I think on Mac it's a command C, something like that. Right? I put it in the buffer. Then I need to go back here. I need to expand this clipboard and I need to paste it in here. Control V. See this? It's in here. Now and only now I can go back in here and paste it. Okay? Only now I can go back in here and paste it. And I'll show you something else in here. So this is a, a pretty file code. So if your code is long, it can indent it for you. Okay? Uh, so now here, what this will do is I want uh, to look at the uh, claims where uh, the I have a policy type personal, right? It contains personal and it, uh, the car size, the vehicle size contains small. So guess what's going to happen? First time I saw it, it took me a while to understand as well. Look, I'm going to click on OK. If I look at my car in here, if I look at the car size, I still see medium, right? I still see other car sizes besides small. The reason is because it's not an embedded filter. It's a selectable filter. It's not applied right away. It's something I can turn on and off later when I create my visualizations, all right? So now I'm going to save it. And I'm going to be showing you more, more stuff in here that you can do. I'm going to be showing you more stuff. But just remember this. Uh, if I go and create my exploration right now, it does not mean that I cannot make changes here. I can still make changes. And they will be available in the exploration where I use it as a source. All I'll have to do is close and reopen the exploration where I use this data module as a source. Right. So basically, I spelled it out for you. Here are the steps to do what I just did. Right. If we want to take, we created embedded filter. Right. And then what else we did is I showed you how to create the uh, selectable filter. This is an expression that I used in expression editor. Right. So here, this is basically, oh, we can do this now. We can fill in the missing values. Notice that uh, I did not take care of all missing values. What I did for you was I only uh, deleted the rows that were, miss that were missing effective to date. Uh, now what I want to do is this. The idea is if, if I'm missing the income value, I want to set it to the column average. So here, what I have to do is I have to go back to my Cognos Analytics here, and I need to find the income. Income is here. I have to right click here, and I'm going to do the properties, and I believe it's an expression. Yes, I'm going to have to go to properties, and the property name is expression. I'm going to have to click on view and edit. So. What I want to do is, if it's missing, I want to set it to the, to the average, right? If it's not missing, I want to keep it as is. 
So the expression, I believe I wrote it for you. See here, this is for the monthly premium, but you can do any variable. You can do income or this is income. So we're gonna, so this is what we're gonna do. Instead of, oh, aha, uh -huh. do you see why am I having a problem now? It's because I cannot watch what I just tried to do. I tried to copy and paste, and all of you are gonna do it at least once, trust me, all of you are gonna do it at least once. I tried to copy and paste from my uh, PC directly, and uh, this is no, 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 you cannot do it. So what I have to do instead is, I have to do this, I have to take this, and I can actually, go this and I can edit this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use income, right? Income. I'm gonna go ahead and edit this here, this expression, and then I'll have to copy and paste. I'm gonna copy and paste and I'll show you. And I'll show you exactly what each piece in here means. Okay, so here it is. Let me copy this. I have to copy this, but I cannot go in and copy in here directly. Some, all of you are gonna do it at least once, trust me. What I have to do is I have to copy it here, then I can copy it here, all right? So what's happening in here is this. Average income, average income is gonna calculate the column average. Average income returns the column average. Here I have an if, the if statement, and I'm saying this, if income is missing, then I want to put I want to put the average income. Otherwise, I want to keep an income as is. Right? When I opened it up first, it said income, right? But I want to change income to this. If income is missing, then average income. Otherwise, income. Keep it as is. And I'm going to do this. I'm going to click validate. <laughs> that means that it's not valid. Like for well, let me give an example. I'm gonna delete this last parenthesis and I'm gonna do the validate again. It's gonna give me an error or something is wrong, right? It's because you have to, number of opening parentheses has to be the same as number of closing. And this is a little bit hard to read, so I'm gonna do this. This is gonna indent it for me. It's much easier to read. You have if then else. So if the condition is true, do this. If the condition is false, do that. Here, this is taking the column average, and it's gonna replace every missing value with the column average. This is what it's gonna do for me. And I'm gonna click on okay, and then I need to save it. So right now, I took care of the income. There are no more missing values in the income. I'm gonna save that, okay? Oh, well, well, do you see this? It like, looks like kind of like ugly. Well, it's because it has to do with the rounding. And you can play around, you can change the uh, properties, you can add another function called round if you want. But, uh, well, I'll leave it as is intentionally so you can see this is an average. Over here, the value was null, and right now it changed to the average, right? So, I, I spelled it out for you how to do that in here, are the steps, okay? Now, uh, here, you, you can create, this is how to create an exploration. We're gonna start it now. But a few things to mention that in the first assignment, you are asked to create the exploration from the data set. But here, starting from assignment two, you're gonna be creating it from the data module. So let's close this. Make sure that you saved it. Everything has to be saved. And if it's not saved, you're gonna see the little asterisk next to the data module name, okay? So let's close this out. And I'm going to go back. Notice what happened here. Uh, it's gonna put anything that I had recently opened. So here I have several options. I can access it from recent or I can also access it from my content, right? But probably I prefer from recent at the moment because I know that that's what I was just looking at. So I'm gonna click in here and I'm gonna select create exploration. It's gonna open up the exploration workbook for me. What do I see in here? Aha, uh -huh, I see multiple things. Do you see this? Do you see this? This is a filter that we just created. This is a filter that we just created in the data module. That will allow us to filter the data, uh, to limit the data to coverage personnel for small vehicle anytime we need. 
The problem is here is this. If I click on this to see the properties, do I know how this filter was defined? No, I don't. See this? So that's the reason why I told you to use the descriptive name so that you will know how it's defined without going back to your actual data module. Okay? So you see this filter because this is a selectable filter. Hey, where is my filter to uh, delete the, to remove the rows with missing values? It's not in here. Why? Because it's an embedded filter. Okay? It's filters that applied right away, and I don't get to see it here. What else do I see? It? Over here, it's gonna, at the time, back at the time when I imported my data, remember, some analysis were done. That's a part that you did not get to see, but just believe me. When the data was uploaded, some analysis were done, and it's looking at the relationships between variables in the data for me. What you see in here, across the page, it's trying to say what I might be interested in this data. In this case, it thinks maybe I want to predict the total claim amount. So that's what it is. It's called the dependent variable. It's a variable that you're trying to predict. And in this case, it's gonna be the dark circle. Uh, the remaining variables are lighter circle. The connecting line means that there is some kind of relationship between them. And the thickness of a line indicates the relationship strength. All right. So what else I could do here? Well, here is a list of other variables I might be interested in, interested in predicting, like monthly premium, etc. But just from learning a little bit about the data ahead of time, I probably want to predict the total claim amount, right? So and if I if I hover here, it tells me that uh, there, there, it tells me the relationship strengths, like for example, monthly monthly premium and total claim rate right, the strength is 35% and it will least it will omit the relationships with the strength 10 or less right uh, now what i can do i can click here in a homework assignment you are asked to say the initial set of questions also the initial set of questions if i click on it here and i click on the see more this is initial set of questions Total amount by education, total claim amount by response, well, et cetera, right? Uh, what I could do, this is my initial starting point. I can click on this plus sign, and this will be added to my exploration workbook. This is called the data, this is called the card. And my exploration workbook is gonna have multiple cards. Each visualization, visualization is added as a card. One thing about the exploration is that you have a very limited control of the appearance. You cannot change the colors, you cannot add the borders, etc. Because this is not a presentation. Data exploration is what you use to discover things in your data. It's not what you're actually going to use to present. When we have a next session, I'll show you how to do the displays, how to do the presentation. So here, the main purpose is just to, to, to explore, right? So here, this is my visualization here. So here I'm, I show, I'm showing the location code. And this is, a, well, in this case, it's showing the sum. But I probably want to look at the average claim amount, not at the sum of all claim amounts. So what I could do is I could uh, go back to data slots. And data slots tells me which variable I'm using for x-axis, which variable I'm using for the y-axis. And I can do this. I can uh, uh, I can change this. This is this is length, and I can change the summarize. And the summarize property I can change it by the average, right? I usually want to look at the average. I have to scroll up, and this is the average. Okay. So this is showing me the average uh, claim amount by location code. Do you remember that earlier we created a filter? We created a filter that allows me to look only at only at personal claims. Ooh, only at personal claims amount, right? And uh, for small cars. Okay. This is what I could do right now. When I click on this folder here, it shows me the columns I have on the data, including the predefined filters. 
watch what I'm gonna do. This is a filter. I'm gonna take this guy here and I'm gonna drag and drop. Right? And it's gonna and it's gonna filter the data for me. I think I have to drag and drop it here. I have to highlight it and then drag and drop. There we go. So right now my visualization is filtered only to the coverage personal and a small vehicle type. That's what it did for me right now. See this? I just applied this filter. Whenever I need to use it, I don't need to define it again. I just go drag and drop. That's it. It's so easy. Okay? This is it. That's all I need to do here. Now I can click on details and this as the insights. This is what Cognos can tell me about this visualization. All right? So it's easy. Did I write pages of Python code? No, I didn't. The only thing I did is a single line of code to define this filter, all right? All right, we're good. So now what I'll have to do is I'll have to save this. Let me click on here, save, and I'm gonna save it to my content, of course. And I'm gonna say, let, let's say that it is uh, claims exploration. Wait, I'm gonna save this. Uh, what else you have is that this guy here is your little friend. Let me show you. This is called the assistant. So I can type here is this, show data. When I type show data, it's gonna show me all the data sets that I have access to. Uh, and this is my claims and weather data module. When I click in here, I'm gonna see the set of the variables that I have in the data module. And it's gonna show me a bunch of information. It's gonna show me if it continues, if it has extremely large values. So I know that this variable here, it has outliers. It has extremely large or extremely small values. Uh, one thing that it's not gonna tell me is that it's not gonna tell me if I have missing values here. It's not, okay. But it's gonna just show me if I have, uh, it's, gonna, it's gonna look at the data type and it's gonna, talk, and it's gonna tell me if there are outliers. It's not gonna tell me which 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 specific records are outliers, but it's just gonna tell me that it does, it has. You would need to look at the uh, histogram, right, to see. Okay, so now what I can do is this. I can click on the number of policies and it's gonna give me information about this variable, like if it's a usage, if it's an aggregation. Remember we looked at the aggregation? So that's if I was going to do a visualization, it's going to show me the sum, right? This is a default and I can change it. I can change it in the properties in visually in, in here in this workbook, or I can go back and change it in the data modular. But when I change the data modular, I have to restart my, uh, my, my exploration all the time. It's like this. When you change the data source, you have to close and reopen the exploration. All right. So now here, this is a field that are related to this here, right? Those are the fields that are related. You may want to click on the related fields and it's gonna give you the plot. It's gonna give you the plot. And if you want to, you can click on here and it's gonna show you more insights. You can scroll, scroll through this and you can even use this visualizations in your visualization. You can do this new, blank visualizations and just drag and drop, okay? You can do this drag and drop. So here it is. This is a visualization that I just created. And if for some unknown reason, I want to use my filter again, do I need to re go back and redefine it? Uh -uh, I don't think so. I can just do this and I can drag and drop, right? But I have to drag and drop to the filters. <laughs> Remember, make sure that filters is highlighted. <laughs> and then you drag and drop and the filter will be applied, right? I don't need to keep redefining the filter all the time. I can just drag and drop. So this is a selectable filter, but I cannot see how exactly it's defined without opening data module. So that's the reason why you have to use descriptive names. So that way you don't need to go back to where you defined it, you know what it's doing. All right, so I'm going back to my friend here and uh, behind the scene, this is a command that it's typing. If I want to rerun the past command, I can just go in and click here. I can just go in and click. It will rerun. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that if you do what I told you not to do, if you use refresh, right, or if you do the back button, you might lose the history here, all right? 
to clear the history, you're gonna click on reset, right? The comments history. Uh, what else you could do is for each visualization, so this is what it means by new questions. Uh, this is my visualization. I click here. This is a set of related visualizations. So it's gonna say, hey, if you learn to look at this, oh, wait a minute, she might be interested in that, right? And you can add it as a new card. See this? So that's what it means, a new question. I want to look at the claim amount and no number of uh, policies for claim reason. I want, num see, this is like, like this. I want to look at that, something like that. But I could also go back to the data slots and if I want to pick something different variable, I can just go in and change, right? So one thing to remember here is that this is folder. If you click on this folder, it's gonna show you the fields in the data source. But if you click on this here, it's gonna show you the card in your uh, workbook. Then what you could also do, and it's gonna be useful later on, you can pin visualization. If you pin it, it's gonna be easy to reuse it later on if you do the presentations, <laughs> but just so that you know what it is. It, it's something if you want to pin. Well, apparently I have something from uh, all the work that I did, all right? But this, this is, uh, so this is how you can create visualizations multiple ways. You can use the visualizations that was already built for you, or you can do a brand new one, or you can do a brand new one, like look at this. I'm gonna do new now. I'm gonna do the single. And this time I'm gonna do something different. I'm gonna do choose type and I'm gonna go to the, this is advanced stuff, here we go. And this part you're gonna need to watch again certainly because you might forget what I'm talking about. Uh, this is called the spiral visualization. And I'm gonna pick my target variable and the target variable is what I want to predict. In this case, I'm, I'm gonna be looking at the total claim amount. So what I need to do is this. This is a called data slot. Data slot is uh, basically what I have to specify, right? <laughs> what I can specify here, I need to specify the target. Target is what I want to predict. If data slot has a star here, it means that it's required. And I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna drag and drop my total claim amount and it's gonna give me the spiral model. Well, some, you have to make sure that the slot is highlighted when you do that, there we go. Okay, now what it's doing right now to me, it's showing me the set of the drivers, the predictors. Uh, every driver, every predictor, which is a combination of columns or a single column, is represented as a pin. The closer the pin to the to this uh, core, right to the center, the stronger is the predictor. Uh, one thing to notice that it's emitted. The, if the predictive strength is below 10%, it's going to be emitted. Here, I, I can toggle between the combination of drivers, or if I want to see only the single driver. So here, it means that just the vehicle class. Uh, uh, drives the uh, total claim amount, and uh, it's 31% right? strength, etc. What I could do is, well, if I want to tr drill down, you cannot do it by clicking it here. You have to do new visualization. There is something called the driver analysis, right? I can look at the driver analysis, or I can also build the decision tree, right? But here, I'm just giving you idea what you might want to look at. Uh, let's look at the decision tree now. Here it is. I'm gonna do choose type, and this is a decision tree. And I'll, I need to show you how you can um, read decision rules. I know we have a lot to cover. So just bear with me. So this is a decision tree, and I'm gonna do the total claim amount. It's gonna be our target again. And I'm gonna drag and drop in here, okay? Oops. Well, sometimes you need to be a little bit more patient. You really make sure that it's highlighted. There we go. So what this is going to do is this. Uh, I will have to traverse the tree to figure out on average what my average claim amount is. 
Uh, there are several ways to read this. Let's look at the rules first. So here, uh, this is an average claim amount of about $1,500. And the rule is the criteria of claims that falls under. So the claims have, that have this vehicle class, luxury car, and this is a employment status, or this is employment status of the claimant, and this is effective to date. So remember this, effective to date, I eliminated the rows where effective to date was unknown because this is one of the predictors. I did not want to happen, you know, I did not want something stupid to happen, so to speak, right? Something unexpected. And uh, also I noticed that uh, the rows that were missing effective to date were missing a lot of other useful stuff, okay? So now look what it did here. It did an internal binning. It combined the unemployment. See here, uh, this is a vehicle class and this is the employment status, okay? And here are the dates, and I'm gonna click on more. So this is a set of dates here. And it's given me the number of records, or so percentage of records that fall under this category. And this is their uh, average total claim amount. Same thing here, this is another category. And there are 39 records or 1% of records. This is uh, how the category is described and this is their average claim amount. So the idea is when I have a new claim, I know this information and I want to estimate the total claim amount. So that's a goal in here. I want to estimate the total claim amount with this information. So here are the rules, right? This is the average claim amount. I can look through rules or I can traverse the tree. So, uh, first of all, you want to, here you'll have to play around. Those are the nodes and you can collapse them. The nodes at, at the end is a terminal node. So once you reach the terminal node, then when, that's when you stop, right? The average, the average total claim amount at the terminal node is the predicted value. So this is what I'm gonna do here. Uh, this is a parent node, parent of the tree, right? It's telling me here the average overall claim amount, and it's gonna show me the deviation and the number of records, so it's everything. Uh, it's using the vehicle class, it's a vehicle class as a first split. So this is a very, vehicle class is the most significant variable here. And what it's doing is that I'm gonna be asking this question. Is that person, new person driving the two doors car? If yes, I'm gonna take this pass. If it's a SUV, I'm gonna take this pass. Otherwise, I'm taking this pass. So suppose that it's two doors, right? This one, next question is about the employment. And the, the pass I take depends on employment, etc. And then I have another one, right? And I keep going until I reach the end, right? Until I reach the end. And what it did was, for me, it, it determined which variables it thinks are the most important, and it picked them here. It picked them here to build this tree. And then when you click on the inside, sometimes you may see some useful information. Sometimes you may or may not, right? Oh, I'll click on the details. Yeah, it shows a little bit of information. Uh, but here, you can, this one is sort of like a drill down. I can drill down based on the values, right? I can slice it and dice it and I'll let you play with it, right? With homework assignment, I'll let, I'll let you play with it. Uh, here you can also so, sort by predicted values, etc. And in the tree diagram, uh, the color code indicate the strength of the predicted value. So here it gives you the range, right? Uh, to take a screenshot of this, you probably want to take the screenshot of the portions that you are discussing in the paper. You might not be able to capture the whole tree, but just take a screenshot of a piece that you're discussing in the paper, right? It's going to be your assignment number three. Another thing that you will have to do is this. Uh, here, this is a, a dependent variable, and it has a list of, list of drivers. You are asked to build more than one module. What you need to do is, 
you may need to exclude some of the variables from the drivers and see the changes. So like for example, this is the edit drivers and I can uncheck what I don't want it to be used as part of the uh, predictors, as part of my predictors, right? Like for example, I don't want to use a state code because I'm already using the spelled out state name. I don't want to use the claim amount, right, perhaps, because, because I, I have a total claim amount, right? I want to uncheck this. So this is what you're gonna do. You're gonna uncheck what you don't want to use and you're gonna click on okay, right? So this will refine your model. And then you want to look if it changed the predictive strength, if it made it better or not. But there is no right or wrong answer, but this is your homework assignment to decide what you want to uh, add remove. This is gonna be in assignment three. You have to create this, but what you want to keep in mind is that assignment four will be continuation of three. So anything that you create, you, like variables, calculations that you, well, anything that you create, calculations, anything you want to be reusable in assignment four, you will have to create it in the data module, right? If I create anything in here, it won't be available for me later on. When I, when I, when I, when I do the, the uh, when I create a new, brand new exploration file, I won't be able to see them or when I create a dashboard. So now let's see what I covered, what I have not. It's a lot to cover. And here, this is an exploration interface that I showed you, oops. One thing guys to keep in mind here is that you cannot change the properties, right? So you cannot change the color, it's gonna be blue. Uh, here I can click on related, it's gonna show me the related visualization and I can add related visualization as a card. Or here, I click here, it's gonna show me the variables I have and the filters I have. And when I click here, it's just gonna show me the cards, right? Bunch of cards, right? So uh, here, I just showed you how to add visualizations, right? I showed you how to edit. There are multiple ways you can just pick one that it's giving you, initial set of questions, remember? Or you can add related, or you can also use that guy that I showed you assistant, right? Or you can create your own, like I did, I added decision tree, I just chose visualization type and then specified what I wanted on the, on the, on the slots. Uh, here are the details on the, on the relationship diagrams that you saw. Remember, this is not a data model. Each field is represented as a circle, and you can see the relationship strengths. And in your very first homework assignment that is due this weekend, you are asked to determine which fields are related to the target variable. So those are the fields that have a connecting line, right? That's it, it's a no-brainer, should be very easy. All right, now uh, here, this is what I just showed you. This is a suggested starting point. But suggested starting point will change if you select different variable. When you select different variable on the diagram, the suggested starting points will change, remember that, right? So this is a guy that I showed you how to use embedded assistant. It's available in exploration, and it's also going to be available when you create your, uh, visualization when you create your uh, presentations in the next class I'll show you. But you can do, you can access it here. This is uh, the short version of it, right? Or you can access it here, it's here. So basically you just literally click on it, the variable and it's gonna give you some information, okay? Now, uh, some of you might be wondering, and I always get this question, I answer it up front. We won't be, we will not be able to do the uh, box and whiskey plot here. We won't be able to do it because in order to be able to do it, it requires a separate package that is not installed here. So we're not gonna be do it. So I'm, I'm answering up front of you. And we will not be able to generate the tables that show the statistic summary. If you want to see the average, you explicitly have to create a variable that shows an average or something. Or it could show it part of the uh, visualization details, all right? Okay, so you won't be able to see it. Well, you have to use the visualizations that are available, okay? Just bear that in mind. Okay, now let's go back. Basically, what happens is I use the slides as a notes, but sometimes I don't exactly follow them because, well, it depends. I adjust during the presentation a lot. So here, basically, what you can do is 
this is this is equivalent if you just type the show column and then you put column name if you do that it's going to list you the data sets that you have access to where that column appears data sets and data modules then you click and you can see visualization so i'll let you play around with this because you really you will really like it right and also when you're looking at my one column you can also look at what influences it. So if I do, if I go back to my assistant, and if I say what influences, right? Influ influences. Well, what influences, and then I type, for instance, income, it's supposed to give me, assuming that I type right, it's gonna give me, well, see this, but it gives me choices because I have several data sets where I have income. So it, it's, it's looking at this one, it's looking at the ones that I currently have open, but it's telling me that it also has additional data sources that I have access to that have income. Right? But I can click on employment status, for instance, and it's gonna give me more visualizations, that, right? That, that's one way, this is what it's saying. All right, so, uh, and, and this is basically, I'm just showing you that you can see inside. When you click on the little eye icon, you can learn more about the visualization insights. But this is something that will help you with interpretation for your assignment. But one thing that you should not be doing, you should not be copy and paste this verbatim because you know you have to summarize. You need it's, it's supposed to be your interpretation. Right? Maybe you see something different that the application does not explicitly tell you. Right. So I'm gonna show you next how to create the navigation path. Decision, decision, decision. Where do I edit depends where I can access it. Uh, right now, I'm gonna edit here. If I add something here, I can only access it where? Here, right? I can only access it here. Uh, navigation pass is a hierarchy that allows me to drill through my data. So this is here, navigation pass, I'm gonna add here. Uh, basically, uh, very often I have some hierarchy in the data which is a uh, state and then it's going to be the county within a state right and i want to be able to drill through visualization uh in this case perhaps i have the state which one am i using here i could okay i use state and location code so let's do this let's do this so now what i do look at this i expand this right and i can find the i need i need to find my state right this is state and I'm going to drag and drop state here and I'm going to drag and drop the location code. So whenever I have visualization that shows the state, I can just drill down by location code. There we go. So I click on OK, right? OK. All right. So this is a navigation pass. See this? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this new, I'm going to do new visualization and I'm going to do the I have to choose type, I can choose type. And then I'm gonna do the, perhaps, let's see, I can do, what, what, let's do exactly the same ones that I'm doing. So that way you're gonna have the notes and you're gonna have it here. Okay, so this one, I'm just doing the heat map here, but, well, let, let's, let's, uh, let's do three maps in, right? This is what I'm doing, I think. So I'm gonna go ahead and fix this. And then, now I'm gonna go to the data slot okay and here i want to go ahead and do the state let's see if it lets me state it won't if if it doesn't let me to drag and drop from here oh yes it does look i have to highlight the state all right so this is what i did i highlighted the state now let's see what i wanted to see about the state i probably want to see the uh average uh total claim amount by state, right? I want to see the average total claim amount for state. And this is what it's gonna do, right? For state. Uh, I probably do not want to see the total, but let's leave it as is for right now. So what hierarchy allows me to do is this. I can click on the Mississippi, right? And in the Mississippi, when I right click, I have an option to drill down. See this, when I drill down, it's gonna show me the data for uh, it's gonna show me the data inside the Mississippi for the location code. See this? This is a drill down. 
Now the data is showing me for, for the location code inside the Mississippi. That's what basically it is. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is this. Okay. Right now, I created this navigation pass here. So when I go and create another uh, exploration with the same data source, this navigation pass will not be available. It's because I created it only in this exploration. If you want it to be available everywhere, you have to create it in the data module, okay? Not here, but in data module. So let me go ahead first, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you something else. See this? I drill down to drill back up, I'm gonna do here. Okay, so this is to drill back up. And I'm gonna save this, right? So this was a drill down topic. I think we also do, well, it's a lot of information today, but please, please, please don't feel scared about it. You're going to be experts shortly. All right. So what is calculation? Calculation is basically nothing but another column. Okay. When I create a calculation, it's going to add another column. Uh, you can use the expression editor to add another column. You can also, uh, you can add a, a, a calculation in here in the exploration, or you can add a calculation in the data module. But um, I know I sound like a broken record, but if you add your calculation in here, it won't be available when you use the data module again, even you use the data module for something else. If you want it to be available, you have to create it in the data module. But in general, to create a calculation, you can do this here. Right, and I'm gonna go new, and I'm gonna go calculation, and calculation is gonna be nothing but another field, right? And let's say let's want I want uh let's say let's say promoted income, right? And I can do this. I can take income. I can take my variable here that's called income. Oops. And and I want to add yeah, and I want to add a. Uh, uh, Perhaps I can do income plus 100 to 200, right? So this is going to be a new variable. And I'm going to click on OK. And I can use the calculations the way I would my normal variable. And what, what it did was, see this? This is here. This is a calcula calculated variable. Any time I want to edit it, I can do edit calculation. And you can create calculations built on top of another calculation. Then you have a nice homework here. Well, not quite homework, homework, but I call it homework because it's something for you to look at. See this, there are different operators. Then there are also the string operators. You can look at something like uh, if the string contains something like something similar to what I showed you earlier. If it contains the word personal or if it's something like that. And you can also do operations in dates. Okay. So let me cancel this out and I'm going to save this. Okay. So we talked about the calculation. It all falls back to expression editors that you use for calculation, for editing expressions, and for filters. Right? So these things are related here. All right. This is going to be interesting. Data groups. All right. This is something that we have not done for several semesters because. All right. So now what we're gonna do? This is a. Uh, this is an expo exploration, right? I'm going to exit this exploration for a good reason. I'm exiting this exploration. What I'm going to do right now, I'm going to go back to my data module and I'm going to click on uh, edit data module, right? Uh, what, I, what I noticed is that as I was using that little friend, I noticed that some of my variables have outliers, right? So I have either extremely large values or extremely small. Uh, one thing you can do to handle it, you can define the binning. It's also called binning. So what will data group do? Let me show you the, the screenshot of what we are trying to create. So that way it will make sense. Sometimes I need to show you the screenshot first. So this is what's happening. I have an original column that tracks the uh, number, of, uh, number of coverages, right? Number of policies that somebody has. Some people have one, some people have eight, right? There are a few people who have 10, right? My data is skewed. If you look at the, the distribution, it's skewed. So what I wanted to do is, I wanted to record my data as this, less than three, uh, something like that, right? I want less than three between 
bet between six, between three and five, right? Between five and six, six to eight, etc. Right? I want to create something like a bin. Instead of seeing actual number, I want to see a label like this, depending on where the number falls under. Uh, this is a numeric variable. When you create the data group for a numeric variable, it already predefines the groups for you, the number of groups and also the, the labels, right? So let's let's do this. Let's do creation, create, sorry. And I'm gonna do the, uh, oh, you don't do it this way. What you need to do here, you have to click on the variable name and then do the data group, do the data group. So this is here. Oops, this this is a number of number of uh, policies. It's right here. So this is what I do. I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna do create data group. This is what I do. Create data group. It's gonna create a new column called number of policies group. By default, the number of group is five, but I can change it. But I'm going to keep it as is. But just keep in mind that in your assignment you can change it. And by default, it's doing the equal. Uh, frequency, not equal width, because what it's gonna do, it will try to put approximately the same number of uh, uh, claims in each bin. This is what it's gonna do, right? Notice that it's not it's not equal width, because here I have from five to six, and here I have less than three, right? So uh, basically here, based on how it's defined, if there is an outlier, if somebody has, for example, uh, 20, that person will be recorded as above eight, right? So there could be an outlier, somebody who has like 25, perhaps, right? It's gonna be coded as above eight, right? This is what it's gonna do. And doing so, we'll create a new new variable. I'm gonna scroll down if it lets me and click on create. Oh, well, sometimes I have to play around with the zoom, okay? I play around with the zoom and then when I scroll down, I'm gonna click on the create button if it let, it will let me. Okay, now patient patience is a virtue. I have to click on create, yes. But basically, what you could also do is oops, here, here it, it is there is an option, it tells you how you want to group the mission values, right? It also there is an option how to group mission values. You can also specify it. But in my case, I took care of mission values already. I don't have them. So now, well, this is what it did. This is the original column. Watch. It created a hidden column. It created a hidden column, this one. So this is a bin number. This is not, it's not something that you're gonna see when you do the exploration, but it's in here, only in the data module, okay? It's only in the data module. You're not gonna see it in your exploration. So let's go ahead and save this. So I created this, right? I created this here. And here, with this example, I'm kind of like, what do you call it? Killing two birds in one stone. This is what I'm gonna show you now. I'm gonna save it, right? I'm gonna save it. Right now, I want to go back to my exploration. Remember this, at the time when I had exploration open, I did not have this, okay? I did not have this group, group label. And it's supposed to be listed in uh, here, see this, group. This is what I just added. I did not have that, so let me do this. Let me close this. Let me go back to my data exploration in here, and I'm gonna click on open, and I want you to see something. There we go, when I go back to the here, this is the data, and do you see this guy right here? So if I added something in there, if I added something in data modular, you need to, Reopen the exploration, very important, very important. If you had the exploration open, no, 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 no. You have to reopen it. Well, I learned that it's better to close it and save it, close it, then go back, edit data module, save it, close it, and then reopen. You must reopen the exploration, otherwise you're not gonna see it here. And th this is what I do. When I, before I show you something, I, I, I explore it, I try to break things, you know, I try to see what, what people could do that makes things not work. So, warning, you need to restart, you need to close this file and open it in order to see the new stuff. Where you add stuff is important because see this is the navigation part, part that I added here, it will be unavailable if I create a brand new exploration 
file from the same data module because I did not add it to data module, right? Where you add stuff is important. Uh, I, I sound like I repeat a lot, but I mean, that's one way to make sure that uh, people remember it. Oh, another thing is that, look at this. If I click here, this shows me what data is being visualized. This usually shows me what data is being visualized at loading. And this is low, it, this is showing me the source, right? And look at this. Basically, basically, look, to build this, I'm using the data, data module. In turn, data module is using the data set. Whenever the data set in question gets deleted, data module becomes invalid, and this becomes invalid. You cannot recover it. Even if I upload the data with the same name, no. Because every copy of the data contains a unique number. And, it, it, and this, this specific file is associated with a number that internally assigned to the file. So whenever you delete something, goodbye forever, right? Another thing you want to think about this, about deleting, if you delete the column from data modules that's used in exploration, you might be getting some errors and some visualizations. So if you're not sure, if you're not sure, let's go back to data module. What you can do is you can hide it, right? And see if it gives you an error. If you're not sure you're using the column anywhere in your exploration and you don't want to do something that cannot be undone, you can first do this. You can right click on the state here and there is a property to hide from users, right? You hide it from users. Then you go back to your workbook exploration, see if something broken. If you broke something that you can go back here and unhide it, okay? So if you're not sure, you hide it first before you delete it, then you can unhide it. But if you delete it, it's gonna be gone, right? And any visualizations that uses that column could be what do you call it? Kaput. You cannot recover it. I'm, I'm serious. All right. So I showed you how to do the data groups for the, the numeric. You can also do the categorical. But unlike for the numeric, for categorical, it's not going to define the categories for you. You will have to do it, right? You will have to define it for you. And uh, here I, I use the coverage. I use the coverage column in that case. Uh, this is what I created the, the, the slide on. So a uh, policy rather. See this, so I have different policies here. What I could do is this, I can click here and I can do create data group, that's one way. Or I can also click on it here and do create data group, right? Here, create data group, policy grouped. Now, there are no groupings for me. What I have to do is I have to do this new group, then I have to specify the group name, corporate, corporate, right? I want to have a group corporate, and then I want to add the members. So what I see here, those are the distinct values. Those are the distinct values right, of the policies. And perhaps I want under category, I want to put this corporate L2, corporate L3, everything that is corporate. I want to do this, right? Then I want to create another one. I click on new group and I'm gonna name it as personal, right? And then what I could do is anything that's personal here, I have to do this, right? But if I, if I make a mistake, if I add something I don't want to, I can, I can do this and I can do the, the clear, that will remove, right? Or I can do this, look at this, I can select it and do this. Like this, there is no error that takes it back. You have to do it this way. Now, what you can do, you can do the group remaining items in, and then you, you create another group, like special. There is more than one way to do it, but this is just one way. You can do it group re remaining, right, like this. It's a shortcut, that way you don't need to drag and drop. What it's gonna do right now, it's gonna do the same thing. It's gonna add the label, new label, and it's also gonna add if it's if it's a it it it's gonna add the hidden hidden uh column that, that tells the, the bin it, it's supposed to do it. But well anyhow, this this is this is added the, the policy, right? Okay, so aha, uh -huh. see this? It did not add the bin number. Why? Well, because we were looking at the categorical variable, it did not bin it for us, right? It did not specify the number of bins. 
I had to explicitly specify it. So it was not predefined for us. That's the reason why. So that's another difference, all right? Uh, here it is. So let's take a look. So we went to for the the. the oops. This is a categorical, right? Spiral model. We went through spiral model. I showed you how to do the driver analysis, and I showed you how to uh, uncheck some of the drivers. You have to do it for your assignment three, right? We looked at the decision tree visualization, and I showed you how to read it. Right? You read it. You traverse it from the uh, root node down. Right, so then you have some options to show five hires, five logos. This is basically the different options that you can see. Another thing to remember is that uh, there is a limit on the number of nodes, it's 36. Then uh, the splitting criteria is that each leaf node cannot have less than 25 rows. So if it's uh, for some reason it ends up being less, less than 25 rows, it's going to merge. So whenever when, it's each leaf node cannot have less than 25 rows. That, that's a rule, all right? Uh, so I put, some, I put some notes, I put some notes for you here so that you remember what I showed you today. And here are just basically how to read the uh, rules, okay? I, I went through this. Oh, now we're gonna do the comparison card. And uh, I think you're gonna like this. So let's let let's say suppose that you want to look at the in this case I was looking for the gender right you want to look at something by gender you want to compare perhaps total claim amount by policy type by gender right this is a, this is a task to compare something by gender this is how you would do it first of all let's save this we're gonna close this and now we're gonna do I'll close this and I'm going to go back and I'm going to open the exploration, right? And you're going to see that I have new stuff that I just added. Huh? This is the data, right? Now what I could do is this. Uh, in this case, I have the total claim by location code, right? Uh, I can go here. Let's see if I have filters. I already have filters here, right? I could do the combination of filters or I can pick different visualizations that I have not filtered yet. And uh, let's see. Well, okay, what I could do is, is this. So this is a number of claims. This one I applied the filter also. Let's, let's, just, let's just create a new card, no problem. Let's create a new card and I'm gonna do choose type this time. And I'm gonna do the uh, bar plot. And what I'll do is here in the, in the lens, I want to put the total claim amount. So this is a total claim amount. It's gonna be the lens, right? And sometimes you have to make sure that this thing here is highlighted when you do this. And, and each bar is gonna be the uh, state code. I want to do this now. So this is a state code, right? And total claim amount or state code. Now, I want to look at it by uh, gender, right? So what I'll do in here, I will filter it, but this time I did not define the gender filter. So this is what I will have to do is, I will have to find my gender variable in here, which is here. I'll have to drag and drop it here to the local filters, okay? Oh, it did not do it. Okay, so, oh, it, I put it in the wrong slot. If you put it in the wrong slot, what you have to do is this, you have to delete, you have to remove, and then you have to drag and drop again. You cannot just go and drag to the correct slot, unfortunately, that's not how that works, okay? Now, you want to make sure that this is highlighted, and then you do this. Okay, now, I want to show this for males. This is for males, right? Now what I'm gonna do is this. I added this comparison card. I'm gonna go in here. And this is a comparison card that I just added. Watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do this. I have to do, I have to duplicate. I'm gonna duplicate it, right? So I have it twice right now. This is a copy, right? 
I duplicated it. In here, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go to my filter. Oops, did I just, did I just, I said to duplicate. Here, I duplicated it. One second. Here it is, right? And I duplicated it. Now what I need to do is I need to find where my duplicate is. <laughs> I thought it did it. Okay, now it did it. All right. So here I have two, right? The first one, I did a gender male. Next one, the second one, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna change it female. Okay, I'm gonna do this filter and I'm gonna edit this to female and check male. Now I want to look at these two side by side. So I take this, right? I'm gonna highlight this two. I'm gonna highlight this two. And then I'm gonna right click on this two and I'm gonna select comparison card. I have to right click or, yeah. Okay, usually right click did it, but if it does not do it, if it does not do it, you can do it differently. I'll show you, hold on. You select this two, right? One way to do it is to select this two and then you, then you select the comparison card, right? Another way to do it is this, watch. I can click on new, I can click on new, then I click on comparison, right? And then what I will do here is this, I can drag and drop, I can drag and drop this here and that. I can drag and drop usually. Yeah. Come on. Or I can do I can do drag and drop the field and then apply the filter here. I can do that, but usually, usually when I selected this and when I selected that, I can select I have I have an option to create a comparison. Oh, I see, I got it. Watch, I have to do this. I have to select this two, and then over here, over here, there is an option to compare. Watch, there is an option to compare. There we go, now it's gonna work. Now what I could do is I can select one point here, and it will synchronize, It'll, it will select the same point on the X axis in here. So I can just do my comparison. And it also, Doing this, see this? It's giving some statistics, compare some of it, right? And I could also do this. I can do the summary. See this, I can look at the summary or I can look at the selected point. So here, sometimes by looking at this, you can tell if gender has an impact on the whole claim amount, right? Something like that. So this is a comparison. It took a little bit to get it to work because sometimes the right click does it, but sometimes you just, you have to do it differently. You have to select this two and then click here. All right, so now this is where you need to save the exploration. Always save it and you want to select my team content. By default, for a known reason, it select, um, you have to select my content by default, it, it's selecting the team, you want to select mine, right? And you won't be able to save it to the team anyway, you're gonna be getting an error. So whenever you're getting an error, you might be doing something incorrectly, keep that in mind. And we're done here, are some useful resources that you can look at, right? So there it is, I'm gonna save this, right? But for the first assignment, you're not gonna be doing the data module. For the first assignment, it's just gonna be, go into my content, and then this is the data set, right? You're gonna copy the data set to your folder. You're just gonna do right click here, and you're just gonna do create exploration. This is what you're gonna do for the very first assignment. You're not gonna be creating data module for what is due this week. But for what is due next week, week uh, assignment two, you'll be creating data module. And please, please, please start working on it early. If you finish the assignment due this week early, you'll have access to assignment tools. This is what I recommend. Start early because if you get stuck, you know what I'm saying? This is our first semester when we require creating data module. So you know what I mean. If you get stuck, you could see unexpected. You don't want it, all right? You want to start working on it early, right? Work on it early, okay? And if there are any issues, you want to uh, stay in touch with TA. And if the issue involves administrator, then I'm the person. So if you are unable to access your account, then 
I'll help you. I'll check because I have a tracking file and I, I, I have a, I have a file where I track what session you're in and etc. I'll check. All right. So there is a, there is buckets of information today. I hope you guys watch this video again and again and again and again and practice practice. I'm going to put the data set into the uh, into the team folder. There is a, there is a folder. If you go back, see this? Here you can navigate through what's open. You're gonna go, I'm back to the welcome page. This is what you're gonna see. I'm gonna go in here and there is a folder called walks through data. Right? It's, in a, it's in this here. I'm gonna put this data set in here. What's in there right now is just the, the, that file was from last semester. That file is this semester. I'm gonna rename it slightly. All right, I don't want to delete the file be because uh, somebody who took the class last semester may, may have done something that depends on that file. Renaming is fine, but I'm not gonna delete. I'm just gonna put underscore this semester label, okay? Now, uh, I, know, I know I talked a lot. Are there any questions? Questions? And of course, after this, guys, after this, as soon as possible, Try to see if you're able to access your account. Big thank you to those who tried last week, right? Remember, to get to Citrix, it's your the same credentials as uh, your MUC credentials. Then it's your, your MUC username and a welcome password, right? It's in the slides. You will have a copy of the slide. You'll have the recording. So practice, practice, right? Steve, do you have something to add? Or if any faculties are attending, do you have something to add? Do you have anything to add, anybody? I'm checking the chat now. <laughs> are there any questions? I'm unable to see the chat, apparently. Uh -huh. Yeah. Are there any questions in the chat? Guys, questions? Well, if there are no questions, then I start asking questions. Remember two types of filters, embedded and selectable. Embedded, they are applied immediately. Okay? You cannot see them in exploration. You don't know how they are defined. It's embedded. Selectable is what you can turn on and turn off. Okay? All right, remember that. Remember that you're going to check your access, right? You're going to practice, practice. What? Let me see. Are there any questions? Questions? Uh, Steve, are you still with us? Let me look at the participants. Okay. Okay. Okay, so uh, Steve, so are you still here? Oh, okay. Oh, you guys are muted. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. You can type your question in the chat, please. Okay. The link to user guide is in this week's assignment. Well, I believe so, but but uh, I, I also included them in a slide. Okay. I also put them in a the slide. There might be, but um, you're going to get the slides too because um, Basically, some of the materials that I covered today are based on my, uh, some of the tips that I covered today, those are based on my observations, basically, because what I was doing with this, I, did, I had my homework, I tried to break it. <laughs> so I, I, I come up with a bunch of tips to share with you what not to do. Yes, Steve, go ahead. Uh, I, I think you've answered most of the questions that were in there. People were asking questions earlier, but I think most of them got answered. 
<clears throat> Again, the key is to practice, of course. Practice, get in and try it. Have fun with it first and learn it. Mm -hmm. So I think we're in good shape. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. I see some some people try to use the whole email account. No, 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 not, not the whole email. It's just the same username, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's how I set it up. I just put the username. It's easier. It's much easier when it just goes straight and just put a password welcome. Same username. It does not have to be the same, but I did it. It was my decision to do it this way. It's easier. Right, Steve? Yes, always easier to follow Elena's instructions. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. All right. All right, well, let me stop the recording and I will remind people oh, I will send yeah, a link yeah. to uh, and you'll have the faculty. Slides. And yeah. Yelena will send slides to the faculty, which will all, they'll all be posted in the classroom. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to stop the recording now.